Thank you for tuning in. My name is Dan. I am the pharmacist here at MD Custom RX. In today's quick video, I am going to talk about something I've been seeing in the pharmacy for quite some time. Low thyroid function related to anemia, specifically low ferritin levels, and what normal ferritin levels should be for optimal thyroid function. Okay, so what I've been seeing in the pharmacy is simply this. Patients come in, typically this is women with low thyroid function. They get, their doctors prescribe them medication. Of course, this certainly does help with majority of the patient's symptoms, but sometimes what's going on is though there's a small subset of patients that that medication continually has to be increased over and over again. What I encourage you to do is if you're, if you're one of these patients and you still are having symptoms of low thyroid function, even though you're on medication from your prescriber, from your doctor, is look at ferritin. The reason this is an issue is it's often overlooked. If you just do your hemoglobin or your hematocrit, you're really, you're potentially missing the boat on iron deficiency. The best way, in my opinion, and that of others, is to look at ferritin. Ferritin is an indicator, a better indicator of iron storage. And so, and this is kind of the first thing to go, where if it's low, we're going to see this show up right away. However, the problem with ferritin is the quote-unquote normal reference range. A normal range could be from 12 nanograms per milliliter all the way up to 200. The problem is, if you're normal in that range, essentially your provider may not say anything about it because it's, again, in the normal range. For optimal thyroid function, we need a ferritin level, again, looking at studies that are published out there on this information, between 90 and 110 to have optimal thyroid function. When our ferritin is in this range, here's what happens. We actually get the iron that is able to carry T3 across uh, from the cytoplasm in the cell. It's actually in, through the cell membrane already, but actually can carry your T3 from your cytoplasm to the DNA causing transcription and basically cell function. If we don't have that iron to carry that T3 to the DNA, to the nucleus, there's a problem right there. What it results in is patients feeling symptomatic. They could be on their thyroid medication but still have constipation, the dry hair, you know, feeling cold all the time, even though their thyroid labs are normal. So. Bottom line is look at your ferritin level if you're still symptomatic and having low thyroid function. Know that iron is needed for T3 transportation. It's also, I forgot to mention this earlier, but we need iron to have proper TPO activation or activity. Thyroid peroxidase needs iron to function as well. So there's two critical components for proper iron levels to uh, equate to proper thyroid function. And again, if your doctor says your ferritin level is in the normal range, ask what that actual level is. Again, in my opinion and many others, you want a ferritin of 90 at a minimum up to 110, 120. If you are looking to improve your iron binding capacity, if you're looking to just incre increase your iron stores, uh, I'll put a link uh, down below uh, for ordering supplements right through our website. Again, I encourage you as always, check with your provider before starting any type of supplementation. But these are over-the-counter supplements. Uh, they're highly absorbable as well. So a lot of iron can cause constipation as one of the main side effects. Reacted iron or bis, what they call bis glycinate uh, iron is, in my opinion, again, studies show this, is much better absorbed through the GI tract than your standard ferrous sulfate. Uh, even your ferrous gluconate for that matter. Those are very poorly absorbed irons that can cause constipation. If you get the right type of iron, even from organ meats is a great source, that particular iron will not cause constipation. And actually, if you fix, if you have that hypothyroid patient that already has constipation, you can give that patient iron, which would cause constipation, is actually going to fix their constipation because now you're going to get their thyroid working right 
and now their metabolism is moving in the direction that it really needs to. That's it for today's short video. Thank you for tuning in. If you found value in today's content, please share this with a loved one. Please go and look at those labs. If you don't have a ferritin level, I encourage you to talk to your doctor about getting this lab drawn. It may be that root cause of your hypothyroidism, and it's been there all along. Thanks again for watching.